And then for my final trick, uh, I'm looking forward to actually exploring with you the item level targeting options that exist here for these GPPs. And I get excited about this because it's these item level targeting ideas or options that present you with some of the power that you would get out of, say, a configuration manager experience in specifically targeting to characteristics of computers or users without all the expensive well, configuration manager. So let's not talk in generalities then about item level targeting. Let's talk about a couple of specific use cases where it can come in very handy when you're configuring some of the GPP settings that we talked about before. The first of these examples or use cases comes back here to my little Acrobat Reader example that we explored just a second ago. Earlier, we talked about how we could modify the registry on machines so that users would get that experience they preferred. That registry setting allows us to define, for example, here that the splash screen has already been displayed and does not need to be displayed again. Well, when we configure this, we are actively updating the registry on these machines. So the registry will be changed on every machine that receives this group policy object. But not every machine in our environment may have Adobe Reader installed. And so we don't necessarily want to go deploying out this registry change if it's not to a machine where Acrobat Reader even exists. So it's here where item level targeting actually comes into play because it's with item level targeting here where we could further select just the machines that are already in that OU that already have the installation of Acrobat Reader. Now, this is only one of the many ways in which you could use item level targeting. If you click the new item link here, you can see the very long list of possibilities that you could use for defining where that item should go or where that item should be targeted to. Like, is it a laptop because the battery is present? What's the computer name? What's the CPU speed or the amount of uh, memory that exists down here in the machine? Uh, what's the IP address range for the machine? How much disk space does it have? All of these are essentially WMI queries against that machine. So all you're doing here is kind of taking the WMI filter experience and making it a little easier to use. Now, in our circumstance here, what we're looking to do is configure Adobe Reader. So one of the best ways for us to determine whether or not Reader even exists is to see if the Reader file exists on a machine. So let's down here choose File Match. And if the file exists in the path C, Program Files, x86, Adobe, Reader 11, Reader, and then Acro RD32.exe, if this evaluates to true, well, then go ahead and then apply this group policy preference setting. And that's all there is. These settings, again, because of how the targeting works, you can very discreetly define these down to very specific machines that have need for whatever it is you're doing here. Now, let me show you a second use case that's perhaps a little bit more fun. I, I teased it a bit when we were talking about power options just a second ago. So let's actually talk about the use of these targeting, this item level targeting, in a way that would allow us to much more quickly bring our machines to a lower power state after the five o'clock end of day bell rings and people leave until the next morning. So let's come back down here to power options and uh, or actually up here under power options where we configured it. This first power plan sets the active power plan as high performance. And let's assume, for example, that I've just configured all the settings to not power off the machine, not spin down the hard drive, uh, not turn off the display, all those things that annoy users during the regular work day whenever they're trying to get their work done. But let's also then create a second power plan. And for that second power plan, let's now think more about uh, trying to conserve power and get those machines to lower power states much more quickly. For that, let's choose, instead of the balance tier, let's choose the power saver mode that we will now set as the active power plan. And in this case, we'll come down here and we'll turn off the hard disk after five minutes. We'll uh, set the machine to sleep after 15 minutes uh, if it's plugged in, for example. Uh, we won't want to adjust those that are on battery because those are perhaps going to be off the network and we would then impact users that are maybe working at home in the middle of the evening. We can set other configurations here, but now as you can see, we have two different power plans that are configured to set the active power plan, well, at this point, simultaneously. It's here where we can bring item level targeting to bear in order to just change the power plans during, for example, different points of time or different days of the week. So here's our first power plan. This first power plan is the high performance power plan. And here under item level targeting, let's create a new item that has to do with a time range. So down here under time range. This is the high performance power plan. So between the hours of perhaps 7 a.m. 
right here, 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., we want this to evaluate to true. When this item evaluates as true, then this will be the power plan that will be applied on those machines. So if I hit OK, that actually sets this. So this first power plan will only be relevant when the time is between 7 and 5. Let's now also create the opposite power plan over here with the bottom one. So this power plan, the power saver plan, if we reset item level targeting here, we can add in another new item to change the time range then between 5 p.m., so 5 p.m., and then 7 a.m. We now have two different power plans that exist at the same time that adjust themselves based on the time of day. So this is kind of a simple example. You might want to change it for weekdays versus weekends or perhaps days of the week, whatever works best for your circumstance. But these give you two really good examples of how these item level targeting objects or configurations or characteristics can be brought to bear to very discreetly define the user experience based off of where they are, perhaps by IP address, who they are by user or group, when they are by time, or any of the other configurations that make sense for your daily operations.